Jason here, Jay's Crazy Cuts. I got the IS3200Z here. Um, we've had it for almost two years now. We've got a thousand hours on it. Uh, we bought it in July of 2017. And I'm just gonna go over a few things of what I like and dislike about it and some of the things I've changed and uh, give you my opinion on them all. Hang tight. So I guess the first thing I'm going to show you right here, what I, what I did is uh, I removed the, the rubber flap. I just have it here to show you what it looks like. It's a big half inch thick heavy duty flap. Uh, normally I don't run a side discharge. I, I, I run mulch kits. But uh, recently I hit a big root and damaged the, the mulch kit uh, baffle underneath. So I've been having a side discharge lately. So uh, what I did is I took the mulch plate, the side plate here, and I bolted it to this, uh, this, this bracket right here that, that bolts on here. And uh, that's what it looks like like that. It's, it's two pieces of bent heavy duty iron right there. And uh, all I did was uh, wedge this, uh, this bungee cord in here and it, it, it sits in there real good you don't have to bolt it in you just wedge it in and basically I just go like that it works good actually and up here I just use the existing bolt and this is for uh, a dead bolt uh, latch for like a, a door frame that I had I just bolted it on there and it's just a bungee with a hook and I just grab it it drops down and then I'll just put it in one of the little height adjustment holes it's easy to grab easy to pull up and go down that's been working out pretty good actually uh, I didn't even put the high lift blades back in or the medium lift whatever you call it I just left the, uh, the mulching blades which is they look like this and they've been doing fine actually. So another thing I did is the the foot height adjustment kick thing. Uh, I, it comes from the factory the other way around with this on this side and they made it I think like this to where you could adjust it for people who are shorter like me. And uh, basically you just slide this was like this and it was flipped around. So basically I just swap that around like so and that works pretty good uh, to where you don't have to extend so far to, to push it into the transport position the only problem is if you're cutting two inches or below whenever you have this back it's like way back so like if you have to go over like a, a I don't know a, a incline or something and you don't want to scalp and you want to feather the deck you got to bring your leg way far back when it's in this position. That's the only uh, problem I have. But uh, it has to be in this position for me and my wife to both use it. Otherwise, we can't reach it with our short legs. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to show you, what I did is I extended this lever right here. That's the lever to where you can put this down. The stock one comes about right here. And all I did was put some tape around the, the the thing, the thing that's like this, I put some tape around it, and then I put a washer, and then I slid a three quarter inch pipe on it to where it fits tight on it. That way I don't have to lean way down. I used to have to go way down here, you know, and it's just, it's just a lot easier to do it like this. So. so right here, this knob, I went ahead and uh, basically bolted it permanently right here they don't come from the factory like that at least mine didn't uh, normally these ferris moors it comes bolted down and if you want to access the pulleys or the belt or the deck underneath here you unscrew this and this bolt stays in place right here and I just think it's a lot easier to, to, to use it this way that way I don't have to unscrew it I can just lift it up and when I'm cleaning it or blowing it, it works fine. 
it doesn't rattle, it stays in place. So that's how I keep mine. This mower here has uh, three belts on it. One that uh, runs the wheel motors from the crank and the other two are running the deck, uh, the three spindles up front. And uh, this is a new version that they've been doing the past few years. Uh, I don't know what series it is, or the, but it's the new ICD deck, or I'm not sure which deck series it is, but this is new, you know, for the past couple of years because they were having problems. Uh, they used to have just one belt that controlled like, like most mowers. Since they went to this two deck system, they offered a much better warranty on it and I haven't had any problems with, with the belts on here. I like to uh, keep grabbers on my mowers in case I need to grab a piece of trash or something and I don't want to get off the mower. But uh, where I keep mine is, is right here. And this probably won't work for every grabber, but it works pretty good on mine. And I just lock it in right there. And even though you have a roll bar, it, you can still lift the seat up. It stays in place. Like that. And if you notice, this is not a fair seat. Oh, it's an Xmark seat. I bought it used from my Xmark dealer. And the reason I put it on there is because it fits better for me, for my body type. Uh, if you look at the seat that came on it, this is the seat right here. And I think it's called the high back. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get down here. But the, the bottom of this, this cushion is not very thick. It doesn't, as you can see, it's very flat and it's real wide. And the bolsters, it, it, it really doesn't hold you very well. Unless you're like 300 pounds, six foot four, I don't think the seat will cradle you in any, any kind of way. Uh, I just wasn't getting the support I needed on that seat. So uh, I saw this seat on the showroom floor at uh, my Xmark dealer. It was a takeoff on a Radius and he was selling it cheap. It looked very comfy. I tried it, I sat on it. And uh, I said, I'm gonna try that on my Ferris and I'm glad I did. I put it on and it's just working great. I had the suspension seat on it. I tried it, it was a $600 upgrade, one like this one. And uh, 20 minutes into it, I uh, was not a fan. It was so thick and tall, it made me sit way high. And the, it was real heavy. Long story short, it just wasn't working for me. So I turned around and I sold it to a buddy of mine. And uh, I just put the original seat back on. Well, I found out after over time that this seat wasn't working out for me. So that's why I ended up going with this one. If you look at the cushions here, these little plush armrests, these are actually the armrests that came on that seat. <clears throat> the radius seat had the, uh, the hard rubber uh, plasticky type armrests. I didn't like those, so I swapped the armrests. So that's the Ferris armrest with the uh, Xmark seat. One of the things that I I got different on this mower was the front uh, no flat casters. They don't usually come with those when you order the IS3200Z. Uh, they're an option. I, I think I paid like $225, $250, something like that for the upgrade. Another thing I got was the, the hitch on the back. And I forget how much I paid for, like 50 bucks or something. It's just a heavy duty piece of angle arm with uh, some new bolts bolts up like that and uh, I just wanted a little hitch on there in case I want to pull my little buggy or hook a uh, tow chain to it or something so another thing I want to show you is this little cover right here uh, if you notice it's a lot cleaner than the rest of the deck that's because I, I usually don't have those things on there that's the first thing I pulled off as soon as I got it just like the, uh, the rock bar over here uh, to me that's just in my way that's just one more thing that I have to deal with. 
I don't need that there. I know it's there for my safety, but um, I'm not trying to stick my foot on that pulley when it's running. So I just want to show you what those look like. That's that side, and this is this side. So right here, this is the, the rock bar, the roll bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, I just have it sitting in here right now just to show you what it looks like. And uh, I usually pull those off as soon as I get the mower. I know they're there for my protection and everything, but uh, I've gotten caught up too many times on the trees and, and all kind of stuff like that. And it's just aggravating. Uh, not to mention it's like 50 pounds, so I don't need that extra weight. So. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is the, the clips that come with it. Uh, this is one of the better bars in my opinion because they're not real wide. A lot of them will uh, come way far out and they catch all kinds of stuff. This one's not too bad, but I don't need that on there. So I pulled it off, but I just want to show you what it looks like on it. One of the things I wanted to show is uh, the hour meter. Uh, I heard from some people that these things only run whenever the deck is, uh, with the PTO is on. And uh, for some reason, mine doesn't do that. Uh, mine actually shows whenever it's just idling. As soon as you start it up, you'll see the low. Okay. I can actually do it right now. Let me show you, there's a little hour meter there. Touch. <laughs> I'm not gonna let it run to show you that it, it does it, but I did I did check it and uh, the hour meter does work just idling. Now I have the Ferris Z2 and I wanted to see if that's the case on that one. And apparently it only does it whenever the deck's on, the PTO. So uh, I don't know what's the difference, if it's hooked up differently or if the hour meter's different or if they change certain models but uh this is this one here runs all the time whenever the engine's on this is what it looks like with uh with the seat up we have the the reservoirs for the hydros right here the batteries right here it just has a, a rubber bungee holding the battery down easy access here's the the wheel motors with the fans, kind of hard to see, I don't have any light on it. Uh, one of the things I really like about Ferris, and I don't know if the Skag or the other, any other, other mowers have this feature, but if you notice with the lever for the brake, it has a cable that hooks to the, the brake calibers on the back, but also, if you notice right here, if you notice right here on this part, whenever it comes in, it locks the hydros in place as well. So it's not just relying on the park brake, it's relying, it, it locks that wheel motor in place, which is an awesome feature in my opinion because with the X mark, uh, it's only the cable holding the caliber. It, that's that's the only park you have and if you don't strap that thing down which I know you're supposed to strap it down on the, on the trailer anyway but if you just go a mile down the road that mower is going to move on that trailer unless you strap it down or chop the wheels or, or something but this thing here I mean I've gone with it unstrapped 70 miles an hour over bumps everything this mower doesn't move on the trailer same thing with the Z2 it's the same way and uh, also, if you're like on a hill and you, you feel you're going to start sliding or, or out of control or anything, I, I don't trust that brake on that mower there. You set that park brake on level ground, you can walk off, come back, and it's five, six feet over from where you left it. it I'm not a fan of the braking system on these mowers. But I, I really like the Ferris. I mean, when you put that bark brake on, it's not going anywhere. It locks it in place. 
Another feature I like on this more is the Carlisle Turf Smarts. Uh, this is the 26 by 12 by 12s. I just replaced these. I got 900 hours on uh, the last pair. That's a real long time for us. Uh, normally, four or five hundred hours tops is uh, what we get on on tires like this on the export here. I mean, four hundred hours is max is the most I've ever got on these turf uh, turf masters. And uh, problem with these tires, at least with me, we, we'll get in a muddy yard or a wet yard, and it, it holds everything in those grips. And when you get to the next yard and you drive off the trailer and you go to drive into the yard, all of the stuff comes flying off on the asphalt and you go, that's time you gotta spin blowing that off and it's not like grass, it doesn't just blow right off, sometimes it sticks. With these tires, we don't, we don't have that problem. Uh, that's what I mainly like about it. Uh, not to mention they last for a real long time. So, anyway, they're, they hold real well, they ride good. No complaints with the tires. I think the best price I got on them was 400 bucks, so they're pretty expensive to replace these particular tires. This mower comes equipped with uh, dual tanks. Uh, they're five and a half gallon capacity. Uh, they have a fuel gauge on each side. And for some reason, this one right here must have got some water in it or something, but uh, it gets it gets dirty and I have to take it off and clean it every now and then. Other than that, no problems. Uh, I did have a problem with the fuel tank selector. Uh, this is this is a new one. Uh, about I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 hours into having the mower, it started getting really hard to move, and to where I had to use two fingers, and then it got to a point where I had to get pliers to to turn it over. So. I got tired of that and brought it back and said I want a new one so they put this new one the first one didn't look like this one so I, I don't know if it's stock or what but uh, this one works you know obviously the way it's supposed to but there's no problems anymore with that as far as the all guard system uh, to get this feature I think it's a thousand dollars more to buy that and uh, it's only exclusive to the Vanguard engines and to get uh, you have to have this particular engine to have that that set up on this mower uh, you can get the 2100 series with the 28 EFI with the Vanguard but I think that's only with the fuel injecting engines if I'm not mistaken that you can get the, the all guard feature with it and that's just exclusive to, to Ferris, to Briggs and Stratton, uh, Vanguard, you know, all of that. That's their baby. But uh, I love this, this system. Every mower should come equipped on this with this. Well worth the thousand dollar upgrade. It holds five quarts in here in an aluminum casing and uh, it keeps it cooler because it, it keeps all of the oil outside the engine uh, not all of it but uh, five quarts here one quart into the engine at all times and it's always circulating uh, keeps it 40 percent cooler which makes it way more fuel efficient I love it you don't need any tools to change the oil uh, everything's hands-free I mean you can do everything with your hand I mean even the I don't know if you can see it with the light, but you just turn this by hand and it drips, drips out at the bottom. The oil filter's in here. This is the dipstick. And uh, you change this every 400 hours. I'm sorry, every 500 hours or every year. So uh, basically, I'm just changing that once a year. Somebody had asked me a question, I don't remember who. But when I did the oil change, I did an oil change video on this, and they were wondering about the, the oil that sits in the engine, the one quart. And I didn't even think about it till he asked me that, and I, I looked back, and it does drain all six quarts of oil out whenever you do the oil change, because I, I looked back in the video and I, I did put six quarts back into the reservoir, so it, it must drain the entire system. Overall, though, I love that system. So let's go over some of the things that I don't like about the mower. 
First of all, it's a little heavy. It's, uh, I think it's 1,440 pounds. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's roughly what it is with the fully equipped with the rock bar in it and everything. Uh, roughly, you could just say 1,400 pounds if you remove that bar, which is what I normally do. That's a little heavy. Uh, the X mark, I think, weighs like 1,250 pounds for the 60 inch version. So uh, it's a little heavy, but I've, I've come to accept that. No big deal. Uh, another thing was the seat. The seat I had to, this is the one that came on it. Wasn't working for me, I put this seat on. So we corrected that, love this seat now. Another thing is, is, is the, uh, the greasable, points on the mower. A lot of people love that. Uh, I'm sure it's great, but that's a lot of time I gotta spend servicing this, this machine. I really, that's one of the things I love about the X Mark is everything is service free. Never had a problem with anything that's, that should have been greasable or whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna touch that, but one I go through at least a tube a week with the amount of yards that we cut and the heat that we go through just service in this machine this this one alone a tube a week and uh, I mean we're roughly cutting about 70 yards but uh, uh, about 40 hours a week work week you know uh, I don't know how many hours on the mower exactly but I mean I, I had to that's one of the reasons I bought this uh, electric grease gun because I was so tired of pumping by hand Sometimes you gotta pump a hundred pumps in each one of these spindles. Every time you service it, you know, every other day. And uh, that's one of the complaints. I mean, it uses up a lot of grease. It's got some big old spindles up in there. But, but uh, a lot of people like that. So I guess they're gonna keep that feature. But that's one of the things I'm not a fan of. Uh, let's see what else. Some petty little things. I'm, I guess I'm being petty here, but uh, like stuff like this. Within I don't know six months of having this thing, that this started to peel. Uh, of course, I could just glue that back down, which I probably will. But stuff like that, uh, the paint it didn't really hold up very well within six months. I mean, it started flaking off. They didn't put a whole lot of effort into doing a good paint job on it. Uh, of course I don't I mean I, I don't baby this thing I go through rough terrain and I'm hitting all kind of stuff and I'm rambling a little bit here but uh, another thing is this is the side plate for the mulch kit that I got for it it's super paper thin uh, I'm not a fan of that same thing with the mulch kit is uh, it's not very heavy duty, which I can understand. You don't want to make all of the all of that that heavy. The mower's heavy enough already, but the deck, um, I don't know what gauge steel it is, but uh, this part, let me see, this part right here, it's only like an eighth of an inch thick, and it's not really heavy duty. I haven't had any problems with anything breaking or bending, other than the, the side plate. But uh, I don't know, I, I guess I'm just being a little petty and picky that, you know, I think they can, they can improve on that a little bit. One of the things that uh, went wrong with this mower, uh, probably six months into it, was uh, I had to replace the, the shock on here. Uh, I kind of fell off of a unlevel ground, basically an embankment or something, and uh, all of the weight of the mower fell onto that one caster wheel right here and it, it put a lot of pressure on the shock and uh, not too long after that we noticed that oil was leaking out of it and it was making squeaky sounds and it was flopping around a whole lot uncontrollably and we had to get that replaced and uh, I forget how many hours I had on it uh, I'll just say it's 400 hours. I don't remember when it happened. But 
whenever we, we had to replace, I asked the dealer, I was like, well, look, I don't want a brand new shock on this side when this one's been, you know, so many hours on it. I didn't want it to be different feeling, you know, as I'm, I'm just picky like that. And uh, he went ahead and replaced both of them just so they would match. And uh, so I had no problem with that. Never had a problem since that. Uh, another major thing that happened was the, the clutch pack in the back. Again, I think it may have been my fault. I think I may have hit something. I'm not sure. There was no evidence of physical damage or anything, but the, the clutch was uh, basically broken into pieces and like just not working right. And uh, it took out the belt as well. Uh, so brought it in there they put a new belt on and put a new clutch pack on and there's no problem there the price on this mower uh retailed in my area for 12.9 when i bought it back in 17. um i ordered the optional suspension seat with it the optional no flat front tires and the optional uh hitch in the back and I think after everything was said and done, it was like 13 something, 13.2, I believe. Uh, I'd have to look it up to find out exactly. But uh, overall, I'm very satisfied with the mower. A lot of great things about it. The only thing I, uh, that was wrong with it was the seat. Replaced that with uh, another one. It's a great mower. All right, guys, that's pretty much my thoughts on the mower. Thousand hours. Uh, if you have any questions that I, I didn't cover, feel free to comment. And uh, if you want to see any more stuff about this mower, uh, I've got a few videos on it. I, I changed the, the transaxle uh, oil in the back. Uh, I did the oil change on it. I got a few videos. You can look, look me up. Uh, subscribe ring the little bell so you can get notified for any more future videos on this more anyway till next time y'all move on